A couple of months ago, we covered the Creality Ender 3 V2, and in the video on that printer, I mentioned that I had also received the BL Touch or Automatic Upgrade Kit specifically by Creality for that printer, and I asked if there was any interest in me making a video showing how to install it. Well, the overwhelming consensus of that was yes, there's definitely interest in me making a video of installing the BL Touch onto the Ender 3 V2. And I've mentioned quite a few times on this channel that personally, I don't mind manual bed leveling at all. I think it's a good skill to have, especially when you're doing a lot of 3D printing. And on a mid-sized printer like the Ender 3 V2, it's not that difficult to install. However, I understand that that is just my opinion and there are a lot of people that do prefer to have an auto bed leveling probe or sensor. So this past week I went ahead and mounted the BL Touch, wired it to the main board and updated the firmware. And of course I recorded the whole process to show you guys. So if you have been wanting to take a look at kind of what goes into installing it to get an idea if it's something you even want to attempt, or if you've been looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how to install it, then this video is definitely for you. And as long as you follow the steps outlined in this video, by the end of it, you should be up and running with your Ender 3 V2. But of course you will have the BL Touch operational and ready to run the automatic bed leveling. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They have thousands of video lessons covering anything from 3D printing and CAD design to electronics and sound design, just to name a few. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons as well as class projects. I've been wanting to continue on with learning Python and have been going through a lesson called Complete Python Course. This course starts off fairly basic with going over data types and goes all the way through web scraping and data analysis. This particular instructor moves quickly, which I really enjoy as it keeps me engaged. The premium membership is less than $10 a month, but Skillshare did provide me with a promo link for the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description. We'll get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I've been really enjoying using this platform and look forward to hearing your favorite courses. So before diving in, I did want to state that although we're using the official Creality BL Touch kit, if you did source the BL Touch on your own, this guide will still be pretty easy to follow. And the main things you'll need is a printed out BL Touch mount similar to what's pictured here. I'm not saying this is the best one to use, but something like this that you can mount the BL Touch. And then there's a good chance that the actual plug portion from the BL Touch to the board will look slightly different like the one pictured here on the right. So just make sure that you follow uh, the cables like in this diagram so that way you are plugging in the correct cables into the correct pin slots on the board. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump right into what comes in the kit. There is a basic instruction manual, but honestly, it's nothing special other than checking to make sure that the pieces are all there. You probably won't be using this for much. Aside from that, we've got two M3 by eight screws, a spare pin, which is great because it is the most delicate portion of the BL Touch. And if something were to get damaged, it's likely that. Two M3 by six screws. We will have our cables that will go from the BL Touch to the main board. Some cable ties, which is going to be to route the cables and make sure that they do not uh, get in the way or get pinched. Various BL Touch mounts because you can use this for quite a few different Creality printers. And of course, the main event, the BL Touch itself, which is going to actually be doing the leveling. And of course, just to confirm, if you're watching this video, this will show you how to install it onto the Creality Ender 3 V2, which honestly is fairly simple to do partially due to the fact that there are two mounting holes already on this back bracket. So first thing we'll do is grab the specific mounting bracket for the Ender 3 V2, which is pictured here. Next up, we will grab the BL Touch. Make sure it's facing the same direction. You want the plug to be on the inside or facing inward. So as long as you have it lined up the exact way pictured here, you'll be good to go. And we'll need to grab the two M3 by six screws and we will screw from the bottom upwards. So basically through the BL Touch and into that bracket. And just want to note that since the BL Touch is plastic, you don't need to over torque these. Yes, you want them nice and hand tight because uh, it's not going to be able to level very accurately if there's any wiggle, but you just don't need to torque these down. So just hand tighten them, make sure that they're nice and snug and you are good to go on this step. Next up, we will grab the cable and we'll plug the smaller side into the BL Touch. Just make sure you line it up correctly and slide that into place. And then I found it easiest to actually throw the remaining cable over the uh, X carriage so that way it's kind of out of the way and we can bolt the uh, bracket to the back plate using those two M3 by eight screws. 
These ones you can be a little bit tighter on if you want, because again, this is metal versus the plastic BL Touch, but realistically the same thing, hand tightening is gonna be fine. The BL Touch under normal operation should have very little uh, pressure, very little force being applied to it. So it doesn't need to be overly tightened and we'll need to get access to the main board itself. And to do so, there's two screws on top. You'll access the front by pushing the bed forward and the back one by uh, pushing the bed towards the front. Excuse the dog hair. <laughs> it is very tough keeping hair off of things when you have two dogs. And then once we're done with that, we'll flip the uh, printer over and there is three screws on the bottom that we'll need to remove and that will give us access to the main board. Make sure you hold on to all three of these. They are pretty small screws and we will need to um, install these again once this install is complete. Once loose, just go ahead and kind of hang the plate over the top of the printer. And we're gonna do some basic routing. So there's actually these nice cable covers that are on the Ender 3 V2. So what I ended up doing was just shoving the big plug of the BL Touch through that. It's not very difficult to do. If you kind of uh, bunch it together, it makes it wider and easier to push through. But just using your two hands, use one hand to kind of push the cable through and the other hand to help with the plug and go ahead and remove the two zip ties. One is on the frame of the printer and one is towards where the main board is. And so that way, once we push this BL Touch cable through, we can go ahead and reapply those uh, new zip ties that came with the BL Touch to kind of clamp all this stuff back into place. So as you see here, just pull the plug through, make sure you've got enough slack so that way it's not gonna be really tight. And just do the exact opposite of what we just did. So instead of cutting them, insert a new zip tie so that way the cables are good to go and another zip tie towards the end where the main board is at. So now we'll need to remove the Z end stop. The issue with that is that it's actually hot glued into place. And thanks to you guys, the viewers, the last time I complained about this, you let me know that if you get a Q-tip and some basic rubbing alcohol and you just kind of dab it on the uh, on the hot glue, uh, not a ton, but again, just make sure that the, the ear swab has got a nice coating of that. And you just kind of get it all around, make sure you get it on the edges. It'll actually make the hot glue loosen up very easily and you can pull it off in one piece, which is awesome. So once that off is just remove the Z end stop, I don't end up pulling the cable out or removing the Z limit switch. There's just no need in case you ever have to revert back, you might as well just leave it kind of dangling there. It's not gonna affect anything. But once that's unplugged, the next step is that we can actually plug in the BL Touch cable. If you've got this kit, it's super simple. It plugs in with just one cable. There's only one direction you can point it in. If you did not get the BL Touch with this kit, you'll have two separate cables at least, maybe three. And so just make sure again that you plug things in correctly based off that diagram that was shown earlier in the video. Now that we've got that into place, before actually uh, bolting everything back together, I just loosely put the plate on and flip the printer around. I don't like to put all the bolts back in until I make sure everything is working in case anything is not uh, correct. And so the next step is the firmware and you've got two options. Creality has an official firmware, which I can link you to, which you can download and you can install it based off of your board. I've got a 4.2.2. You can see this by just looking at what the board says. It's 4.2.2 or 4.2.7 or you can use the extensible UI, which this is a, in my opinion, far superior firmware. And I show you how to install this in a video uh, just a couple of weeks ago. It gives some major improvements and additional features. And so I will link to this. This is what I install. You've got quite a few options between UBL or BL Touch, which I think is really personal preference. I'm going with the standard BL Touch firmware, which will basically just probe a three by three grid or a five by five grid. There's also a high speed mode, um, but basically just going to this download page I'm looking for the 4.2.2 because that's what I have, BL Touch and the 3x3 grid. So once I've located that, I will go ahead and download the bin file. And you will need to drag and drop that onto the micro SD card for your printer on the root of it. Make sure it's not in a folder. You want it in the primary directory or in the root of that. Once done, you can eject the micro SD card, plug it into your printer, make sure the printer's off and then flip the switch. It'll take about 15 seconds to flash the firmware and then it will boot. If your screen looks a little different than mine, it's probably because you didn't do the extensible UI, but it should look just like mine if you did. And the BL Touch, when you turn the printer on, will do its self-testing where it kind of uh, probes twice just in the air. At this point, I did go ahead and cut the zip ties that were on the Bowden tubing and install two new zip ties that has the BL Touch cable kind of routed nicely through them. Then on the screen, if you go under the new leveling tab 
and you go to create new mesh, it'll go ahead and probe your bed. Uh, mine does a three by three grid. Yours might do a five by five if you chose that, but uh, it will take longer than this. This is 20X sped up, so just let it do its thing. Then the screen will ask if you want to save to EEPROM. Click yes, that just means it's actually saving it, and when the printer turns off, it will still remember that. Then I do a little bit more cable management. I actually tuck the cable into the fan housing. It's optional if you want to do this, but it does get it out of the way a bit more, so I do uh, recommend that. And then, of course, the final step for the hardware side is just to reinstall the three screws on the bottom and the two screws on the top to close the mainboard housing. After that, you'll likely want to go to prepare and then Z offset, and then you will go ahead and adjust the Z offset. If you click live adjustment, it'll go ahead and home the printer, and then you can micro step up or micro step down with a piece of paper just to basically make sure that the nozzle is the correct distance you want away from the bed. So similar to like when you manual level, you just need to do this in one point so that way it knows how far away the nozzle should actually be. You can also adjust on the fly. If you start printing and notice the nozzle is a bit too high or a bit too low, you can go ahead and hit adjust and raise it or lower it um, if you need to. The final step is to add this M420S1 command to your starting G-code. That just makes sure that when you slice a file and hit print, it actually uses that saved leveling data. So I will show you how to do this in Cura. It'll be slightly different in other slicers, but very similar. Basically, you just wanna go on Cura under Manage Printers, click on the Ender 3 V2, click on Machine Settings, and on the bottom left, there is a kind of text area and after it says G28, you'll want to hit enter to create a new line and just type in M420 space S1. Um, I would do caps just like I have here, followed by a semicolon. And then you don't have to write a note. I just did basically saying enable mesh. So that way, if I look back, I know why that G code's there and what it serves. And then of course, the last thing is just to download a file. I chose this uh, Chibi Loki that Chaos Core Tech uh, did upload, which I'll place in the description slice it up in Cura and hit print. And the first layer was absolutely beautiful. Like I did say though, if for some reason the first layer is not perfect, you can uh, always adjust the Z distance through the screen. And that has been how to install the BL Touch into the Creality Ender 3 V2. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are now up and running successfully. If you do have any questions about anything I covered in this video, uh, maybe you need a little bit more clarity, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. Also, other viewers have a ton of knowledge as well and it's been awesome to see viewers helping out other viewers answering some of those questions that maybe I cannot get to. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you did want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back each and every single week, spending more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.